Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be downloading MX Linux on VirtualBox using a Windows 10 host computer. We'll first download MX Linux, then we'll create a new virtual machine, and we'll finally install MX Linux on that virtual machine. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. I'm here on the mxlinux.org website where we're gonna go ahead and select the download MX Linux option here. This is directly on their main page, so you'll have very easy access to it. After we've clicked that, we want to go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. You can see here that the current release is MX 19.1. And here we see that we have the direct download option. And if we click on the mirrors, we'll get to select from various different types of mirrors all across the world. Scrolling down, we'll see a list of the mirrors and make sure to choose the closest mirror to you. So I'm in the United States, so I'm gonna keep scrolling down until I get to the US of A. And Utah should be fine for me. So just click on that and your download will begin. So give it a few minutes while it finishes up the download. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the VirtualBox app. So I'm gonna start it up real quick. VirtualBox is available at virtualbox.org where you can download it. Also, if you wanna learn more about VirtualBox, check out my walkthrough and install video. It's a great place to start if you're a beginner. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below. VirtualBox is an open source software for virtualization of machines. Simply put, you can emulate a computer through the use of the software. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and create a new virtual machine by hitting the new button. Following that, let's go ahead and name this virtual machine. Since I'm installing MX Linux on it, I'm gonna go ahead and type in MX Linux. The machine folder is fine by default for me. This is where your virtual machine will be stored on your system. Next is type Linux, and since we have Linux up here, it guessed that we're going to go ahead and install a Linux platform. The version, you can go ahead and stick with the 4x 64-bit kernel, or we can actually select a Debian 64-bit because MX Linux is based off the Debian stable branch. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next after that, and we get to choose our memory size. So this is the physical RAM memory that's going to be allocated by our virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and give it 8 gigs. Most Linux distributions require at least 2 gigs or more in order to run properly. Just make sure that you're not in the red zone for your particular computer because that will mean you are starving your own physical system of memory and everything's being devoted to the virtual machine, which you don't want to do. After you've selected your memory size on however much you can allocate to the virtual machine, let's go ahead and hit next. Following that, we have the creation of our hard disk. So we can create a new virtual hard disk now. So let's go ahead and do that and hit create. Next, we get to select what type of hard disk file we wanna create. VHD and VMDK might make it a little bit easier to export to different types of virtualization software, but the native VDI works fine for me. So I'm gonna select the default and hit next. And here we get to select what type of disk we wanna create, a dynamically allocated storage disk or a fixed size storage disk. Well, the dynamically allocated one is usually the best choice just because it will save some room on your system because the virtual machine will not take up any unnecessary space on your system unless it's required by the virtual machine. So it can grow by itself until a certain limit. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. It'll save us some storage space. And I'm going to go ahead and select at least 32 gigs of storage space. I've ran into issues before with Linux distributions if I don't have at least 32 gigs available to the Linux distribution. So as a general rule of thumb, I go ahead and at least supply 32 gigs to my virtual machines. You can go ahead and, of course, specify more than that. The system won't actually take the 32 gigs up until the virtual machine grows to that size. So you can go up to two terabytes. After you're done selecting how much storage space you want, go ahead and hit create. Some more information about VirtualBox. It's developed by Oracle and thanks to them, we have a very powerful and free virtualization software, which is more than suitable for most computers. Virtualization just refers to the process where you can create a virtual machine in an emulated environment, such as VirtualBox. And a virtual machine is just a platform that runs an emulated computer with the hardware and resources that are available along Inside your main computer in a virtual environment. So before we start up the machine, let's go into settings and just change up a couple things here. The first thing I'm going to do is go to system and then enable the EFI mode so we have access to the newer firmware of BIOS that's available and is used by most computers nowadays. This will emulate uh, UEFI BIOS for us. And after that, I'll go to the processor tab and I'm just going to allocate two cores of my CPU to the virtual machine. If you don't have that available, one core will work just fine. But the more you give it, the smoother the virtual machine could be in theory. 
So if you go to the storage finally, you'll see that you have two controllers here, a SATA controller and an IDE controller. On the SATA, you have a hard disk already attached and that's the one that we just got done creating. You can see that the virtual size is 32 gigs and the actual size is only currently two megabytes because we haven't put anything on it or started it. But what we're interested in is this empty storage space right here, which is a disk image. Let's go ahead and put our disk in, which is the ISO file that we just got done downloading. So we can click the choose a disk file and you can see here I have the MX 19.1 X64 64 bit architecture installer available to me right here in my downloads folder. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit open and you'll see it get populated over here. And once that's done, you can go ahead and hit the OK button. All right. And at this point, we can go ahead and start our virtual machine and you just hit the start button and it'll come up. It's just verifying what startup disk you want to select. Since I was installing Ubuntu earlier, I have this option for Ubuntu 19. I'm just going to go ahead and select the MX19.1 ISO for myself. You probably won't have this issue, but go ahead and make sure to select MX19.1 and then just hit start. As you can see, we've launched the boot menu here for the installer. I'm going to just move down a little bit so I can cancel out of that automatic timeout. And let's go ahead and make this a little bigger for ourselves. So if we go to view and we go to the scaled mode, we'll switch to the scale mode. And now we'll be able to resize this virtual machine to our liking. So it looks a little better and we can see it a little better here. So I'm just going to make it as big as I can for now. First selection will load us into a live image of MX 19.1, which you can see was released in February 15th, 2020. So I'm going to hit enter on that option and give it a few moments here to go ahead and boot in. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. All right, we're welcomed here by the greeter. I'm just gonna close out of that. And what we want is this installer right here on the left-hand side. This will allow us to install MX Linux. So let's go ahead and launch it just so we can see this a little better. Give me a moment. And now we can see this installer a little better. I'm gonna go ahead and make it larger. So the first thing in the installer, we have the keyboard settings and it says what model and layout you currently have selected for your keyboard. The default here is US. If you need to change your settings around, you can go ahead and add in a layout through this menu right here. After you add it in, you can select it and hit OK. And since mine is the English US default keyboard, I'm going to just hit OK. And then we're back in here where we can select next. Following that, if we want to rearrange disk partitions, which we don't since this is a brand new virtual machine with a empty storage space, we want to auto install using the entire disk. What this method will do is erase anything and everything on the disk and put MX Linux over it. So in our virtual machine, we had that 32 gigabyte hard disk that we created. As you can see here, it says VBox hard disk standing for virtual box hard disk. And as long as you've gone through the steps prior to this, you should see the same thing and be confident that you have the proper disk selected, which is the virtual box hard disk, which has nothing on it. If that's the case, you can go ahead and choose to encrypt it or not. I'm not going to encrypt my disk. That's just going to ask me for another password besides my, besides my user password. And it says if we want to leave some free space up of these 32 gigs, we can specify it in megabytes here. I don't want to, I want to use entire 32 gigs. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And it says, just as a warning, do you want to format the entire disk SDA, the one we have selected for MX Linux? Yes, I do. So it's going to take a few moments here and it's starting to format a few things and the install has started. We have install grub for Linux and Windows. Well, since we don't have a boot method at the moment installed, the um, default selection is fine for us. And it says SDA one is the one to use. Yes, we want to use that one. We really don't have another selection that's off of the disk that we're just installing on and the very first partition that got created on that disk. We're going to go ahead and select next after that. My computer name, I'm just going to call it Savvy Nick. And then for a computer domain name, I'm going to put Savvy Nick as well. My work group, I'll do Savvy Nick again, how original. And I'm going to go ahead and select this checkbox and it's already pre-selected for you for a Samba server for Microsoft networking. This will help you network with Windows computers on your local network. So it's a nice package to have. I'm going to go ahead after that, hit next. Following that, we get to choose our locale and the United States American English is fine for me. Select whichever one you're part of. 
And then let's configure the clock. So I'm in America and I'll be in Mexico City today. And you can change up the format here between military time and the standard time format. Besides that, after you have all that set up, you can go ahead and hit next. Now we get to create a user. So I'm gonna call him Savvy Nick and the password, go ahead and put that in and confirm your password. Things will turn green once it's been confirmed correctly. Now for the root, we get to also put a password in. So make sure to go ahead and put one in and confirm that password. You can show your passwords if you're not confident that you typed it in correctly. Uh, you can choose auto login, which will automatically log you into your user that you just created after starting up a computer. I don't suggest using this because someone could just restart your computer and automatically be logged into a user. Finally, you have the save live desktop changes. This allows you to save any changes that you've made in this current session of the live image and apply it to your newly installed system. I don't want to do any of these. I'm going to go ahead and select next. At this point, it's just finishing up a few more things. It shouldn't take long. MX Linux has been developed by the Anti-X and former MEPIS Linux communities and deploys an XFCE desktop environment as its default. It's built off the Debian stable branch and is considered a semi rolling release. As you can see, now I have the option to go ahead and automatically reboot the system after this installer gets closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow that to be checked and just hit finish. MX Linux also considers itself a middleweight distribution that has a lot to offer to everyday users and is well balanced between performance and user friendliness. It's become one of the most popular distributions for people making the switch over from Windows or other platforms. And here it's just telling us to remove any installation media that we may have. That way we don't boot back into the live image. I'm just going to go ahead and press enter here and just give it a moment. As things restarted, I did get an error here. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay. This has been happening with some newer versions of uh, VirtualBox. Not quite sure what's wrong there, but uh, it doesn't really affect the installation or anything. I'm just gonna go back into settings here and then just check on one thing. If we go back into storage, we wanna make sure that our controller IDE is empty. And it is, so that's great. We don't wanna boot back into the live image of MX Linux. Another neat thing about VirtualBox is that it's available for most platforms, including Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. It really doesn't matter what system you are using because the layout of VirtualBox doesn't really change, so you'll be familiar with it on any host platform where you choose to install it on. All right, now let's go ahead and start this up again, see if we get any type of an error this time. And as you can see, it's trying to start it up. I just canceled up out of the automatic startup so you can see the grub boot menu here. It's going to select by default this MX 19.1 first line item. And that's the one that we actually want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press enter and let things start up here. All right, and it's asking us for a password at this point. So I'm gonna put one in for my user that I just created, Savvy Nick. And at this point, you've successfully installed MX Linux on VirtualBox, congratulations. We're welcomed here by the greeter. I'm just gonna close out of that. And let's just go through this a little bit. First, let me change this to full screen mode. I can do that by doing control F and switching to full screen. Now you can see that my resolution now got messed up because I went out of scaled mode. So the first thing I like doing is going into my display properties and changing up the resolution. So let's see, something that works for me, that should be fine, but that 1440 by 900 will work fine for me. I'm just gonna apply that and it doesn't quite fill up the screen, so I might need to change this to something even a little closer to my native resolution. Here we go, this is a little bit better, but uh, still not quite. And the reason being is uh, one thing after you're done with a fresh install of a virtual machine is to use the guest edition CD in order to install the tools given to you by VirtualBox, which will help the virtual machine run smoother and its operating system run smoother with its operating system and allow for proper display rendering and resolution support. This process changes a little bit between Linux distributions, so I'll let you look up the install process for your particular distribution, but let's go ahead and mount the CD real quick. If I hit devices and I select the insert guest editions CD, you can see that things got mounted here. Let's see if I can run this real quick. So if I right click and just hit open terminal here, I'll have a terminal and let me just log in as a super user here. If I put in my password for my user, now you can see I am a super user and that user is called root and I'm in the media, my home directory and the CD. What I'll do here is install and run the run as root script in order to, which that script must have been wrong. 
uh, let's try running the vbox linux editions run let's see if everything gets installed properly here real quick as you can see after i got done installing the tools that the resolution actually just fixed itself so now we can see everything fine and the start menu is available here let me go ahead and go into display settings again and let's change this around since i have more options available to me and as you can tell after the virtual box editions got installed my resolution fixed itself and now I can see the start menu. So let's go through the desktop environment here real quick in MX Linux. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. Close this window, close this as well. In the top left-hand corner, we can go ahead and click to log out of uh, our current user as well as shut down the computer or restart it. Below that, we have the time available to us. And if you click on it, you get a calendar that you can use. In the middle here, you have the current time as well as the date and the current storage disk memory and CPU usage. On the left hand side the manual and frequently asked questions are available through a shortcut and down here towards the bottom we have a few shortcuts as well for Firefox their default web browser you have the file manager so you can browse the file system much like you would see in Windows and then the volume control and any updates that we currently have available you can unmount any of the CDs, DVDs, whatever you have in your system currently, if you have anything. Then if you select this icon, it lets you change modes. If you right click, presentation mode and power management settings. And then here you have the ethernet network currently available. So this is a wired connection because we have a virtual machine that's tethered between our host computer and the virtual machine itself. Finally, below that, we have two workspaces available to us. As you can see, you can toggle between them. And finally, the start menu where you have all your subcategories, and we can make this a lot larger if we want it. On the right hand side, you'll see those subcategories. So if you want internet, you have all your internet apps underneath this subcategory. Accessories, MX tools that only come with MX Linux, and settings to set up your system the way you want it. You have the current user who's logged in and you have a search bar. So this is where you can look for things such as display settings. And on the top right, you can log out and look at settings as well. And that's what I plan on doing. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down at this point because we're finished up looking through MX Linux. Congratulations on installing your new MX Linux virtual machine on VirtualBox. I hope you enjoyed this install of MX Linux on VirtualBox. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Please make sure to go ahead and post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.